Hello, I'm Nick Faldo. I'd like to welcome you to this program, which I hope will improve your golf and also your enjoyment of the game. My Open Championship victory in 1987 was the greatest achievement in my golfing career. It was the realization of a dream, but it wasn't achieved without a great deal of hard work, commitment and belief. Over the previous two years, working with my coach David Ledbetter, I had changed my swing completely in an effort to make myself a more consistent player. Dave and I spent many hours on the practice ground, working on my swing. This program will enable you to learn our philosophy and see how we approach a round of golf. We traveled to southern Spain, to Valderrama, where we played the Volvo Masters, the last event on our European tour. Here we go. Sticks. But let's start at the beginning, and as we all know, good golf starts with a good grip. With David's help, all we're simply trying to do is unite the hands on the club, keeping the club face square. Now, as you see, David's drawn a few lines on this glove here to give you a, a better indication of exactly where we're trying to put the hands. As you can see, the left hand is pretty much a palm grip. It lies diagonally across the palm. This is indicated by these two lines here on the glove. And it's placed across the palm and through the first finger. Now as Nick wraps yes. his hand around here, we'll notice that the V formed by the thumb and the forefinger, the line indicated here, points very much towards his right shoulder. So very important to get that left hand position correctly on the club. And as you can see with these lines, what these indicate are that Nick can see two knuckles on his left hand. Very important for the club golfer to have at least two knuckles showing on this left hand. Yeah, I think initially, a couple of years ago, my grip was a little bit too weak. Right. And this, uh, by moving it to the left, as you can see, my thumb is directly on top. And this causes poor takeaway and bad rotation of the arm. So it's important to feel that you're just a little right of center, nice comfortable position there. Then we ap apply the right hand. Right, now the right hand is pretty much a finger grip and as you, as you can see as we place the right hand on here it lies across the base of the fingers here. The shaft lies right across the base and wrapping the right hand on top there you can notice the, the thumb of the left hand fits pretty much into the pad, the meaty pad of the right hand here. If we can just open this we can see it lies right under the thumb joint here. And as Nick places his hands on the club there, there's a little gap, if we can notice, between the first finger and the second finger. This little gap is important because it helps to join the thumb and the finger together. This just keeps the pressure consistent, and now, as we can see, the hands are a unit on the club. Yeah, I, f I personally feel I try to keep an even pressure all through my fingers. And most, as I said, very important. Keep it nice and relaxed so you, you can have this movement all the time through your swing. You've got to have freedom. You don't want to be rigid. There we go. Nice and relaxed. So really to summarize, we'll, we'll see if the hands are set correctly on the club. The club face will then be squared impact. There is a choice that we have as far as where we place the little finger of the right hand. Now the most common grip, as Nick grips it, is the, what we term the overlapping or the Varden grip where the little finger just sits on top of the index finger. This is most commonly used by most players on the tour. But there also is the other grip, the interlocking grip, which say Jack Nicholas uses. And um, this generally speaking is used for people with very small hands. We recommend that for maybe juniors or ladies. And then there's the third grip, which is not very common these days, which is the two-handed or baseball grip as they term it in America, where the right hand just sits beneath the left hand. Basically, we're trying to get the hands working as a unit. So I think the most comfortable grip is the one where the little finger just sits on top there and it just rides piggyback. We want to stress that it's, it's so important to spend a little bit of time on your grip. It may feel very uncomfortable to start with. We, if you could just go out and hit a few balls each day, 20 balls, not worrying where they go, get your grip in the right position, then the feel will come. And if you can do this, it's gonna help your game tremendously. Having now got your grip right, the next step we've got to take is getting your, your stance, alignment and posture correct. Now the simplest way we can sort of uh, explain this is to imagine your alignment as a railway track. And the outside rail is, the, is your target line going through the ball to your target, which we've indicated with an umbrella to make life a little easier for the camera. And you are going to stand parallel 
on the inside track. So the, the alignment is not actually pointed at the target, but it's parallel to your target line. So let me just check this first. So it's now running what I would imagine to be a little bit left to target, but only fractionally, which is going to get you now in the right position. This is the easiest way you can work on this on the practice ground. Put the club down, and now we've got the base to work on, which is can get our body in the right position. Let's work from the feet up. We want a nice square stance, about shoulder width apart. Not We don't be too narrow, because obviously it's going to cause a lot of swaying. And the important thing with your, your toes and the feet are, if you were to stand naturally, you'd be, you'd be square. So to make life easier on the follow through, we want to turn out the left foot, just a fraction to give you the freedom to let this knee work. And again, we don't want to, on the backswing, we don't want to restrict the, the turn of the right knee. So we just let that open just a little bit. Right, now we've got our feet positioned. Let's go on to our body alignment. And the most important thing what we're trying to do is get every part parallel to our target line here. So we start with our knees. We want these level. But then probably the most important area is your hips. You see how I want these in line, which is going to really in the, uh, pull the shoulders into the correct position. Quite often people worry a great deal about their shoulder position, but in fact, if your hips are slightly out of line, you can see how they're pulling slightly left. That's going to automatically pull my shoulder line again now pointing left. Obviously the other way, if we're a little bit shut, the hips are pointing to the right of target, automatically going to pull the shoulders on line. It's, it's impossible to not move these two or move these two independently. So we've now got our body, as you can see, aligned correctly. Our weight distribution is, is nice and even between the feet. Now what I want you to try and do to get the right body pos posture is to just stand tall and then flex your knees so in a nice comfortable position and what we're trying to do is get the weight evenly down through the knees and into the balls of the feet here so as a guide as I look down I've lost the vision of my laces and that sort of thing I don't want to go too far where I can't even see my shoes I'm here nice comfortable position now the next important thing is tipping the waist forward. Now if we go too much from the waist, we create a, a rounded back, which is a stoop position, very difficult to turn. So where we want to actually want to bend from is from the hips again, keeping the small of our back nice and straight. We can then tip ourselves forward there into a nice comfortable position where the arms hang nice and freely. Another little guide, if you're about a hand's width away from your, your left leg there, you've got your hands in a, a nice position. So there we go. There's the basics. David will now uh, run through probably some of my old faults, I think. Well, very simply, Nick used to have too much weight back on his heels here and very open with the hips there. So what we did, obviously, was propped him up to a position where yeah, the right foot was very square, so we've pointed that out a little bit there. Much easier to get your body turning in both directions if you have your feet pointed out. So what we simply did was actually get the weight further forward in Nick's stance, more towards the balls of his feet. Got his behind stuck out a little bit. You can see his back is nice and straight. If you just grip the club there, Nick. See, his back is nice and straight. His chin is up too. You don't want to get your chin too low because this allows your shoulders to turn freely by having the chin up. And very important, very important, which most club golfers should really try to follow this point, the arms need to be relaxed. We cannot overstress that. Yeah. The yeah. arms need to be relaxed. You don't want to have any tension in your arms. Now we're going to move into the takeaway as it's commonly referred to or the move away as I refer to it. Very important in getting the club moving away to make sure that things move together. Remember we're setting things up for the rest of the swing. The golf swing is basically a chain reaction so everything happens from here. So in moving the club away here you'll notice how Nick moves everything away together. His middle, his navel and the club move in one piece away together there. For the first few feet, you'll notice how everything turns together, his chest is now turning, and basically his navel is still pointing at the golf club. Now, it appears that the club face is actually open, but in actual fact, it has just simply moved with his turn. You'll notice as he, if he turns and faces the golf club right now, okay. you'll right. see that the club face in actual fact is in the same position as it was at address. So remember, staying nice and relaxed here, the body moves the club away. Rather than the hands and arms initiating everything, we try to get the body moving the club. 
There we go, yes. We get him here, and all we're trying to do with the weight, as David said, is resist here. We don't want any lateral movement. We don't want any swaying at all here. What we're trying to do is actually turn and let the weight feel as if it's coming backwards behind us here. Now, a simple tip to make this a lot easier for you is to put the, the grip of the club right into your belly button there. Now, if you cheat on it and just use your hands and arms, you can see it comes right away. So what we want you to do is turn the stomach there and pulling it into one position. And as you can see, the club is perfectly square. I can put the club back down on the ground and I could ret retake my stance here, square. So we're not trying to roll it or fan it or take it shut in any way. We're using the body to pull it there into the right position. This also, in getting the club moving, we can see the right shoulder has started to move behind Nick. The right hip has started to move and certainly the weight has started to initiate its movement to the right side. One of the problems that Nick used to have in his golf swing was moving the club away purely with his hands and getting the club face very shut and also moving the weight to the outside of his right foot. So very important to move everything away together so if Nick turns now and faces the golf club, he's basically in the same position as he was at address. Okay, so if we can get Nick to move the club away to the first stage of the backswing. Now we're in a position really where the club continues. Simply what happens from here, the right shoulder turns, the right elbow folds, and the right wrist really hinges. So now you can see at this point here, we've got the wrist almost fully cocked when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Now as Nick continues his right shoulder turning, the weight moves into the right side, the back is facing the target and he has wound up the big back muscles here, really coiling himself ready to come back to the ball. One great practice drill David gave me was what I would call a, a preset position, where after I've taken my address, I preset this, this wrist cock. So I, the club is parallel with the line and also parallel with the ground, so I have completed the wrist cock. I don't want to be here or too far down. Set it completely. Now simply all I do is turn my right shoulder behind me, but resisting with my right knee. I don't want anything else to fold back with it. So pulling back with the, the right shoulder. As you can see, I've completed the backswing in a perfect position. Just quickly run through that again. Set the wrists so they stay in front of me there parallel and on, and on line. Now just turn the right shoulder into that position. I've resisted here and the other very important factor is I've kept my spine straight so it keeps me in a very good position. Maybe David you want to run through a couple of little things on that as well? Yes I think it'd be very important to mention here you can notice at the top of the next swing there this is one of the myths of the golf swing that we like to uncover. A lot of people try to concentrate on a straight or stiff left arm. Now you can see Nick's left arm is fairly straight but it is not stiff, there's no tension here. So that's something that you want to really try to work on is relaxing the left arm because remember, if you get your arms too far away from your body, you're putting all the emphasis on your hands and your arms. And the other thing really to mention is the fact that Nick has maintained his spine angle that he had at address there. You can see the angle at his waist there is exactly the same as it was at address. There was no lifting or raise or dropping of that angle. So as a result of that, his shoulders have turned on a relatively flat plane. This is one of the things that we've changed in Nick's golf swing. He used to have a very tilted shoulder turn. Now he has a much flatter shoulder turn and is able to get the club in a much more consistent position at the top. This is something you can do uh, practicing. You can take a nine iron and just work on this setting action, turning the shoulders. And I, I want to tell you, knowing that you're getting the, the backswing in the correct position every time is great for your confidence. I think it's probably an opportune time now, Nick, to talk just a little bit about the plane because I think a lot of people get mixed up with what is the plane or what is not the plane. That's right. We don't really want to say just because you're tall you swing upright and just because you're a smaller person you swing flat. You are swinging simply on the, the posture you've created and how your shoulders turn and that's going to put you onto the plane. Well, exactly you put correct. that in the ground and we'll show everybody well, simply what we're what doing. I'm going to do here is put the shaft in the ground pretty much parallel to Nick's shaft at address there. We'll just check that. That's pretty much correct there. Now you'll notice as Nick moves the club away here, as he sets the club, you will notice that the club 
is pretty much parallel to that shaft there. That's the reference point that we're using. Remember too that the plane going back is not the same as the plane coming down. So this is purely a reference point. As Nick continues on here, he reaches his top position there and he is what I would refer to as on plane. Simply if we can bring the club back again, Nick, certainly if we swung the club out here, that would be off plane. And if we swung the club around this position, that would be off plane. So simply a very easy reference point is when we set the club is that that shaft is pretty much parallel to the original shaft line. Yeah, as I said, with, with the taller and shorter players, even if I was could bring myself down a foot more, because I'm standing further away from the ball, if I got myself in the right body position, I'm turning, and again, you see, I'm still on the same plane, as you can see by the shaft, and a, a, and a pretty similar top of the backswing position, even though I brought myself down a foot further. So, it, in a way, this proves the fact that just because you're a small player, you've got to, everybody says you've got to swing around yourself, or if you're tall, you've all got to go up. Certainly not. We feel that you've got to get, because you're standing this side of the ball, and you're just turning, you're going to pop yourself on plane. Now what we've done up to this point is really set Nick up for the art of actually hitting the golf ball. Now, if Nick could just take the club to the top there, it is a very difficult job to try to piece your downswing together. Things happen so quickly. In any event, what actually happens as the golf club is going back, some part of the body is actually going forward. So there really isn't a distinction between backswing and downswing as a lot of people like to make out. But what we will do is to show you and describe to you what does happen and through a few drills there you'll be able to feel what takes place in your downswing. So Nick at this point certainly has completed his backswing. Now I'm going to just shorten Nick's swing just a little bit because to put this in sort of real terms as Nick is completing his lower body will be starting to move forward in the opposite direction. In other words the weight is starting to move to the left side here and this is initiated with the lower body, the left knee starts its movement forward and as you can see what happens here, the hands and arms drop down to a point where they get to about a hip height position. From here on, Nick's body will then rotate through towards the target. You can see his impact position here, his weight now is into his left side, it's going around behind his left heel, pretty much the same way as it was going back. The downswing you can think of as a mirror image of the backswing. Now from here, as Nick clears his left side out of the way, his right side now comes through into a position where he finishes up in balance there, his weight fully into his left side and then facing the target. You can see here Nick's hips are facing the target and his weight is now virtually 100% into his left side and he's in a nice balanced position. For the slightly more advanced players, what actually happens at the top with the, with the arms to create this leverage and this power that we get, as everything is pulling, as David was saying, as I start to get to the top, I'm pulling here. Also what happens is you get a, a re-rotation of the arms. They're actually pulling back this way, which drops the club onto this slightly flatter plane, which enables you to maintain this wrist set that we talked about, and you can pull the club as hard as you like now into this position. The right side has retained back a little bit. We're not trying to leap forward with the legs. The right side is staying passive to this position here. I've managed to pull the club down. Now I'm in a perfect position here. The club has come from inside. I can now release the body and holding through the, as the arms rotate into impact, squaring to impact, and I can squeeze the ball away, and then I let this left side fold, very much as the right side has folded on the backswing, I let the left side fold on the way through, which keeps the club head moving through as quickly as possible into that balanced finish. We have a little drill here that Nick will show you with the beach ball. Put it another way. Yeah, as, as I uh, quickly explained about the arm rotation, this ball will hopefully show it a little easier with the, how the colours will change. As I take it away, my arms are rotating round a little bit, you see how the, 
there and as I go up into that position. Now as I start down, you can see how this is pulling back in a re-rotation before it then starts to return back into the, the shot, into impact. And then it will rotate through again, which is proving, as you've seen, that the same color in the same place, that I'm starting off in a square position, I'm square at the top, and I'm square coming back down and then back into impact, square position. And as you can see it going through, I'm square. I'm not trying to roll things over. As you can see, the color is now facing down. I'm turning there, back down into impact and around into a square position, and which is also going to keep this right wrist in the same position all the way through the swing, up to the top, back into impact, and then round to the follow through. Again, simply all I'm trying to do is, is create some leverage in my, in my knees and then in my hips. I turn my shoulders fully, but then I start to resist my leg action here, my hips here. As I'm almost re reaching the full 90 degree turn, you can see that the lower half of the body is now pulling. It's pushing this way. You actually get the impression that I'm pulling this way, out to the, to the right of the target. And that will then in turn drop the right shoulder into the correct position. So that the club turns on plane, but then to get back onto plane, I get this sort of lifting action. The left shoulder's got to come up. It mustn't stay down, otherwise we get this over-the-top action. We pull in up, which is dropping the club down in this position, and then I'm free to go through. It's very important that we get the body to pull the arms into position rather than trying to get the put the arms into a position by simply learning to turn. Another one is the club across your chest, the same thing, turning here and then turning through. By doing this, the arms have got to follow. It's impossible for them to go in any other direction. There we go. You'll find that the actual inertia of the golf club keeps the club on the right track there. We see so many golfers obviously trying to get to the top of the swing there and trying to hit the ball from the top there, as opposed to using the body correctly and really letting the ball get in the way of the swing, as opposed to trying to hit at the ball. Another little drill we've got, which is quite difficult for some of the players will find, but we use a towel and we place it under our armpits so it restricts the arms from, from wandering all over the place on the backswing. It enables us to stay together here. Now I recommend for the uh, not so advanced golfers that you do this without a ball to start with and just get the feeling of a light pressure obviously which is needed to, to hold the towel up. If your arms come away from the body you're going to drop the towel. So we keep that there and I just want you to get the feeling of turning which will help everything turn together. And you can go all the way out. I've got a nine iron here. That's all I recommend you use. And just turn just three quarters of the way up and then through. And you can see what this is what it is doing on the follow through, how it's tucking me in. There. Now for the slightly more adventurous, you can try and hit some shots with this. Just with a nine iron, nothing more than that. All I'm trying to do is get the feeling of the club starting away and through. And I'm keeping my arms together. It makes everything happen in one unit. Obviously, if, if it comes away going back, I'll drop the towel. Or vice versa going through. If, you, if the left side doesn't stay together as you pull round, if the left side goes away, you're going to drop it there. So we'll show you again. Turn everything together. Turn that stomach and through. Nice and gentle. We're not trying to hit the club full distance. We're just trying to use this as a, as a feel. Well, Nick, I think we've covered every aspect of the golf swing this morning, and uh, I think it's very important for the viewers to realize that although we've split the swing up into pieces, that they've now got to put it together again in one nice smooth package. So why don't you go ahead and hit a few shots for us, and we'll see how this is done. Great. We'll see the overall rhythm and flow of Nick's golf swing. And although he has worked individually on the pieces, he has now put it all together so he can go out and play with the golf swing. Everything looks very natural. 
In the beginning, I think when you're making changes in your golf swing, I think you'll find it'll feel very uncomfortable and very unnatural. But after a while, these things start to fall into place. Let's see how well balanced Nick is in his swing. Notice how when he finishes, he finishes with all his weight into his left side, is able to maintain that position too. You find many golfers, when they finish their golf swing, are really not able to hold the position for any length of time at all. Well, David likes it. Let's take it to the golf course and see what happens. Right, we're now out on the golf course and the first club out of the bag is the driver. We're on the 10th tee of Valderrama, which will be the 10th hole in the Volvo Masters, which we play each year at the end of the season. We've chosen this hole because it's uh, a good shape hole and we've got some bunkers in the distance there which we can use to uh, indicate how I line up. Now, one thing that we didn't touch on on the range was really the ball position because this varies tremendously with the, each club that we use and also the variety of shots that we wish to play. So now we're on the golf course, we're gonna spend a little bit more time showing you that. And with the driver, what we're trying to do, once we've set ourselves up parallel to our target again, our ball position is going to fall somewhere around our left heel to left in step. As a personal thing, obviously some people try to hit the ball a little higher or whatever. The driver, of course, you're trying to hit on the upswing now. So that's why we have a little bit further forward than normal. And again, we've, as we discussed, our posture and our alignment, I'm going to align myself down the left side of the fairway, but my target is somewhere towards the middle to, to the right-hand side as the hole shapes around the corner. Another thing which is probably one of the most important things that all good players do is they have a pre-shot routine. And I, like many others, we, we start from behind the, hook, behind the ball, sorry, and we picture the shot that we're trying to hit and we visualize the shape and everything. And then more important, we pick out a target in the distance that's gonna keep us on track and gives us a good guideline. Right, so I'll go through the steps that I use. I stand behind the ball and simply my target is now down the right-hand side of the bunker so once I then step away from this, I'm now started into my pre-shot routine. So I've pictured the target. I put my club head down exactly where I want the ball to go. Down the right-hand side of that trap, I take my stance. So I'm nice and comfortable. So I'm perfectly happy that I'm ready to go. Now all I need is a little bit of motion to get the club to move away. And I need one swing thought in the back swing. So I, I usually think of my hips to get those turning correctly, and here we go. There we go, and it all went pretty good. As you can see, I've kept my follow through. I'm not trying, never trying to force the drive. I try to keep the same swing pattern, same rhythm, and hit a good shot. Well, Nick, we were confronted with a par five here, which requires a fairway wood. We've got about 230 yards to go uphill. So certainly I think it's very important for golfers to look at the lie before they take out the club. I think if the lie is very tight, they might want to use a more lofted fairway wood, but you've got a very good lie there, so I think a three wood's an excellent choice. So let's set up to the ball there and see how we're going to go about that. Okay. First thing, as we can see, the ball is positioned very much like a tee shot because we are trying to sweep the ball. We're not trying to hit down on it. And also there is a fair amount of weight, probably maybe 60, 40 placed on the right side there. This helps us to hit up on the ball without literally trying to scoop it in the air. Now, very important, the rhythm and balance in the golf swing here. And as, as you'll see when Nick makes the swing here, he'll really work hard on maintaining good rhythm and good tempo. Okay, I'll go through my pre-shot routine again, lining up, picking my target just left of the pin and setting myself right on that target. Move the weight back a little bit, nice and comfortable, and here we go.
Tempo is all important. Maintain your balance and swing to a complete follow through. Now we come to the long irons, which is the nemesis of many club golfers. In actual fact, they're not as difficult as most people make them out to be. You'll see when Nick makes a few practice swings here, how he'll really try to maintain his balance and his rhythm. Most people try to help the ball up in the air because of the little loft on the club. So if you can just let the club do the work and really make sure you have good balance, you won't have too much of a problem. Okay, I'll give it a... I'll have one practice swing here. Saying exactly what David has said, I try to keep my head Nice and still, and I want a good, powerful follow through. I don't want to be de-accelerating or trying to help it up. I want to be accelerating through the ball. All right, let's see if we can hit one. For a shot like this, I've got a slight breeze coming off the left, so my first thoughts would be I would try and hold it up against that. So I want to have a slightly inside path. So I want to make sure I'm slightly inside and then through. So obviously for that I'm going to have to stay very still on the shot and stay with the shot. Turn fully and release out to the right a little bit. Thanks Jack. Long irons are harder to strike than fairway woods, so it is vital to stay down and believe that the loft of the club will get the ball airborne. Well, Nick, I think we're into the part of the game that most amateurs need a lot of help on, the pitching part. And, um, you know, somewhere between the sort of 40 and 80 yard shot is where many golfers need a lot of help. I think really they have a lot of fear about these shots where it really is fairly simple. It's a matter, I think, really of understanding the technique to a point where they uh, make a normal golf swing and uh, understand how far they've got to hit it. That's right. I think. We reduce the body movement considerably. We're just going to work with our hands and arms here, even to the extent of grounding our right foot to keep the body still. And the, the one secret that we like to use is we try to hold the club off a little bit, i.e. we're keeping the club head behind the hands. The hands are working faster than the club head all the way through. As we said, we've got to be aggressive with these shots and not quit on it, not try and help it up, but hit firmly through. Exactly. Why don't you hit a few, Nick, and it's... Uh see what we've got. All right, well, we're on the fourth hole of Valderrama here. This is a great example of a, of a pitch, a difficult one over water with bunkers and everything. So we've got to be positive and firm with this. And as we said, I line up the club on my target, on the pin. I stand a little bit open, but I'm nice and firm. Weight a little bit on the, the, the front foot, the left side there. And as I said before, I'm going to pull it through and hold it there through impact. Keep my head down all the time. There we go, nice crisp shot. We've now moved back 20 yards. The shot remains the, very much the same. All we want to do now is extend the stroke a little bit more. Same weight on the left side and everything. I'm using a sandwich for this shot, which I recommend to, to all of you. And all I want you to do is get back in this same position. Now, one thing I want you to try and remember is to, to feel the distance. Is whatever distance you take the club back, I'm going to use about a half swing for this, that I want to go through equally the same. This will keep your rhythm exactly the same through the swing, stop you from being too short and jerky going through. So I want it halfway back, halfway through. Let's try one. I just want to emphasize the arm action. By keeping the body still, relax your arms and almost make them feel heavy. I'm going to go halfway back, halfway through.
toy factory. Right, we've come back to 80 yards now. I should think this is about the full length of most of you can hit a wedge. And really, I'm going to use what I would call a small full swing. It's going to be a nice, gentle, full swing. I'm not, I don't want to force it. Obviously now, my body's starting to turn. I don't want to resist quite so much as a hands and arm action. I'm trying to let the whole thing swing. And I, as I said before, the 60 yard shot, take it all the way back and all the way through. Probably the most important thing here is to stay balanced. Line it up in a nice, full, easy swing. As you can see, I haven't taken much of a divot at all. I'm not trying to hit down on it excessively. All I'm trying to get right is my tempo. Nice, full swing, back and through. If you're having problems in getting 80 yards, go to your pitching wedge. I think you'll find that a lot easier. I'll hit one more for you. Right, we're moving on to the lob shot now. Now we have two balls here and two totally different situations. As you can see from the lie, I have one nice and fluffy lie just on the edge of the rough and have one very tight lie. Now this is going to require two totally different shots, even though I'm trying to achieve the same thing. From the fluffy lie, the club is, we're trying to move the ball, club under the ball, nice and slowly, so that we're using just the loft of the club to loft it up. We're going to need a slightly longer swing, and we're using really just the weight of the ball to lift it up, and that will let it land softly. On the tighter lie, we're going to need a much faster hand action, a little bit more wrists, so we want to get under the ball and we're trying to nip it out of this tight lie, so we've got to be accelerating through the ball and hit a nice crisp shot. The tight lie is going to require a much faster hand action, hitting down on the ball, taking a divot, setting the club and, and going through quite firmly and quite quickly. Again, I want my weight on my left side, club face a little bit open, I'm going to set the club and then pull it through quite quickly, taking that divot. Let's try one. Keeping your head still all the time. Okay, a little bit firm on that one, but I'll show you the, the softer lie now when the, the ball's sitting up. We're going to use the bounce of the club to go under the ball and that's going to lift the ball up into the air. So it's almost even though we're quite close to green, we're playing like that 40-yard lob shot, the pitch shot rather. We're going to hit through the ball quite soft, a much softer hands and arms action. Because the club face is open considerably, we have to take quite a long swing because we're losing that length. We're trying to send the ball up and then land softly. So again, weight forward and quite a long, slow swing. As you can see, there is very little wrist action. All I'm trying to do is slide the club head under the ball and make sure you follow through. The sixth green at Valderrama is a beautiful par three. This is an ideal spot to show you some chipping and bunker shots around the green. Well, what did you think of those, Dave? Well, the technique looks very relatively simple there, Nick, and uh, obviously you've got a good pattern going to the shot there, and must be a lot of feel involved in these shots. Yeah, I actually try to get my right hand as the feel club. I use my left as just to guide it through the, the stroke, but you get the feel of the right hand almost as if you're feeling the distance rolling a ball towards the hole. Luckily, I can chip them better than that. <laughs> 
Do you uh, change clubs or do you tend to stick with one club, Nick? Well, we're about 20 uh, yards or so from the pin here and I think the most important thing that I try to do is get the ball onto the green in those first couple of yards and then get it rolling like a putt. I almost read it like a putt. You know, I stand behind, picture the shot, I get the break and then and my target area is, is here, just a yard or so onto the green. And, you know, I move a little bit back in the stance and work very much with just hands and arms and feel it forward. So we're just trying to get it on a yard or so. There we go. Yes, the ball really hugs the green and rolls up, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think as we, as we work closer, as we get closer to the pin, we can change club and then it really does become feel. You've got to come up, picture the shot, you've got to see your lie, uh, be able to get the, the club behind the ball nicely. Obviously, if we've got a lot of grass, we need to go for shorter irons. We use eight irons and wedges, and, and then we can hit down on it a little bit more. But on a longer shot like this, very much a feel shot in the right hand. Very much like a long putt. Okay, they would now move to the back of the green. We're only 15, 18 feet from the hole. Yeah, I mean, we hit a good shot in and we've just gone off the back of the green. And this is a shot that a lot of amateurs are, are afraid of because really all we're trying to achieve is a simple little stroke backwards and forwards, throw the ball onto the green, we're downhill to the hole and we just want to let it roll. Now, one thing I've used over the last couple of years, I've, I actually use my putter grip. And I think this helps me because all I'm trying to achieve is a little stroke backwards and forwards. I'm not trying to help it at all with my wrists and loft it onto the, to the green. Very much a pendulum type stroke then. Yeah, we work very much with setting this angle with the arms and the shoulders and keeping that all in one unit going backwards and forwards. Move the ball quite a long way back. I've got a nine iron here. As I said, all I'm trying to do is just loft it a couple of yards onto the green. There we go. It's a very dead shot, isn't it? It doesn't roll much. Yeah, we're trying to just put enough hit. By changing your grip, that helps because you, you've reduced this little bit of wrist action. You know, if you come out too, too much wrist action, you're going to hit it too hard. So with the dead wrists, we can get a nice... See, I can hit that quite firm and the ball's only gone a couple of feet past the hole. Exactly. Now, you're using a nine iron here, are you, Nick? That's right. I think you can... Again, feel the shot. We're going downhill. Obviously, uphill, you can go quite as low as even a six iron. Obviously, if you're just trying to get it to run that one yard and then up the hill. Just try and knock one in for you. Nearly. This is a shot that obviously the pros are looking to hole, aren't they? Yeah, I think they, they certainly don't want to feel they're going to ever drop a shot from this position. They, they, they're only 80 feet from the hole. And with a bit of luck, we'll get one in. There we go. Very good. This is part of the game that a lot of amateurs are very scared of. David, let's get you in here and explain the technique of bunker play. Well, you certainly made those look easy, Nick, and we'll see if we can do that for the viewers. First of all, I think it's probably a good idea to describe the sand wedge there, because many golfers you yeah. know, think they can get away with a, a poor sand wedge, but you find most of the pros are very particular about the club that they use. I think the importance is, is getting the right amount of bounce. You know, this is how measured how the, the bottom of the leading edge is below, sorry, the bottom of the back edge is below the leading edge. And this, of course, when you strike the sand, enables you to hit down on the ball and then the club will lift itself out of the sand for you. You don't want anything that's too sharp where the, the club just keeps going down. Right. Yes, I think it's important to uh, understand the fact that this is really the only shot in golf you don't actually have to hit the ball. The ball is riding out on that's the right. sand. You use the sand as a buffer and, you, and that's how we get our spin. Right. And it's really not as scary as most people make it out to be. Right now. Let's, uh, let's set up to it here. Certainly the first thing you're going to do is set yourself a little bit open. You can see the way Nick sets up there. He's got his feet, his knees and his hips and his shoulders aimed probably about 30 degrees left of the flag for this length shot, which is probably about uh, 40 feet. He's placing the ball just forward of a, in his stance there. There we go. Let's draw a line. Sort of. There we go. I'll just draw a line in this direction so you can see 
where the ball is positioned in relation to his feet and how open he is standing. Now the important thing in setting up to the, setting up to the ball is to grip the club correctly. When Nick grips the club there, you'll notice, first of all, the face is open, but he actually opens the face and then grips it. It's very important that you must not, under any circumstance, just open the club face, otherwise it'll return closed. So the club face has to be opened initially and then the hands placed on the club. Okay. So the club face is set slightly open. In fact, the club face almost looks slightly to the right of the, of the target, of the flag. Now, Nick's feet are just approximately a little narrower than his shoulders. Now, as he swings the club back, we've, we've assumed he's buried his feet in for good balance. Yep. As he swings the yep. club back, you can see the wrists do hinge, and he's not attempting to swing the club outside here. He's swinging the club on the line of his body. Now, we'll notice as, we swing, as he swings the club back, the wrists have hinged fully, and he's in a position where he can now simply allow his hands and arms to release through the ball there. So, he's going to look a couple of inches behind the ball there, keeping his eyes focused on that spot rather than the ball and we'll see uh, the full flowing motion of his swing here. Yeah, it's important that we, we keep the extension. So many amateurs hit down and expect just the explosion to send it out. We're not trying to hit a lot of sand. I'm trying to enter a couple of two inches behind the ball and come out probably two or three inches. So I certainly don't want to go in deeper than that. You'll notice too when Nick plays this shot how well he stays down. The flex in his knees stays very, very constant. So we do not want to stand up on the shot at all through the ball, otherwise this is where the blade shots come from. So Nick can get fairly aggressive with this shot as well, but as long as he makes contact with the sand and keeps the club accelerating through, he is certainly not going to hit the ball too far. I also find that Keeping your, keeping your base still. If you use too much leg action, if you try to help the ball out with too much leg action, you know, you've moved your, your center forward and that's gonna cause you to thin it. So keep that right knee firm in, in that one position and really just use your hands to pull the club through the ball. There we go. After the relative straightforward bunker shot, we now have a variety of lies to show you. And we start off with the uphill lie, where the problem we have faced here is really we have a wall of sand in front of us. So, A, number one rule is we're gonna have to hit the ball a lot harder. We won't need quite so much an open face because the ball is already on the upslope, so we're not gonna have too much problem in getting the ball up. And really, we don't want to hit too far behind it either because we're going to have to take a lot of sand and we're going to have to full, pull through the shot and be very aggressive on this one. So let's see how we can play this. Same setup and everything, a little bit squarer on my club face and the club is going to be entering the sand on a sort of a level basis. I, I'm not going to try and help it up at all. I've got to hit into the sand and blast a lot of sand away and send the ball up. Just to repeat this shot once more, remember I've got this wall of sand in front of me. I don't need to release the club at all. I can hit it in quite firm, holding this left wrist solid. Okay, I'm now in the back of the bunker on a, on a down slope, as you can see, a very different problem to the, the up slope that we faced before. This time, as you can see, I've got to try and get my body into the same angle as the, as the lie. So I have to get myself well forward and my shoulders down a little bit because what I'm trying to do is chase the club through after the ball, keeping it down. If I'm back on the same normal level, as you can see, the club will enter right in the back of the ball and you'll probably thin it out. Again, the club, the ball is rather going to come out a lot lower and run. As we saw with the uphill shot, that comes out a lot higher and, and will always stop. So again, I, I'm opening myself up. The club face is on target and I want to pick it up a little bit more this time because invariably you're going to have the back bank in front of you. So pick him up and go through. Keep your head down all the time and let's follow through after this one. 
stay up there, ball. The amateur's nightmare. The plug lie. Now, it really isn't as difficult as you think. And uh, with a lot of amateurs I've watched playing, you certainly don't have to go in there as if you're trying to kill snakes. Really, all you need to do is have a short, sharp thump through the sand. And on this occasion, you don't need to follow through. What we're trying to do, depending on the length of the shot, on a shorter one, we can have the club face open. And all we're trying to do is have a nice thump going down through the sand. As you can see, I'm just trying to keep down and just remove that sand from in front of me. The stance is very similar. Just a little bit more weight on the, the left foot. We can set the club a little bit more on the backswing because we're trying to get down steep into the ball. Again, we go in probably two inches behind and then down and through. And you stay there. If you keep your eyes there, don't lift up, trying to help it up in any way. Just stay down and pop it out. The problem is plug lie again. If I require to make the ball run further, imagine it's going to go past the pin this time. All I simply have to do is from that original club face position, it's just to close it a little bit, back to square in fact. And again, there's the same downward stroke and popping it through and it should run a lot further. We've covered the real basics of chipping and bunker shots. As you can imagine, there are hundreds. The, the variation is enormous. Let me show you how I practice. Now, wherever they lie, let's go and play them. An easy one at last. There we go. Well, that'll be a nice one to win the Volvo Masters, Nick. Oh, so I hope I can do it as easy as that. Let's talk a little bit about padding, shall we? Yeah, this, really we want to work on the basics and give everybody a, a good idea of how to get a simple, repetitive stroke. Exactly. So we start from, I think, just from three feet to give you the right picture of what we're trying to achieve. And that's a nice pendulum action with the shoulders and the arms nicely relaxed, forming this angle where we can keep the club just going backwards and forwards on line. There we go, put one there. I want to just take him back and through. Simple as that, on target. Please you have your bit. eyes in relation to the ball, Nick. Well, I think uh, a simple exercise to do is to uh, take your address, get yourself comfortable over the... Give you another ball here. Well, I'll use, I'll use this one here, and I'll pop it right up on the bridge of my nose, and if I release it, there we go. That's where he landed, and that's directly over your eye line, both vertically and in between your vision as well. So that's a great indication of, and a nice easy tip to get you positioned every time on the putts. Most people uh, really are a little tentative and as they come coming through they start to follow and they start to peep at the hole. If you can pick a, a small target, a little speck behind the uh, behind the ball and as you go through you keep your eyes on that target all the time and you can see how well the club head then goes through to your target. Sure. This is one little drill you can do quite simply. Six tees placed wider than your putter head and the idea is just to give you a guideline of coming back and through the ball correctly. If obviously if I bring it in too far inside I'm going to hit this tee and I'll be thrown off line. So I want to go back and through, keeping the putter head nice and low and slow. And also a good tip is that whatever distance you go back, you also go through. This will keep you accelerating through the ball. 
Need a couple more. You got anything to add to that, David? No, I think it's very important that people understand that on these little pats there, the putter certainly does work pretty much straight back and through, but as we'll see when we get into the longer pats, the putter does tend to work a little inside. Well, this is another little effective drill that we use, Nick. Let me just place this shaft under your armpits here. Stab me. There we go. All right, now what this really indicates is how the shoulders work in the swing. You know, we find in many cases, golfers tend to take the putter back with the shoulders and move them in an incorrect fashion, especially going through the putter. If we can just illustrate this, Nick, if you can swing it back for me. And as they swing through, a lot of this happens. So very important to get the feeling that the left shoulder is going down and up. There we go, very much like a pendulum. You can see the motion here. So this is a very effective drill, and uh, you can either use just a plain shaft or say a two or a three iron to help you to do this. Now Nick's just going to practice putting to a tee, which brings to mind that this is an important thing to work on. When you're working on your technique, don't worry about the hole. Just work on putting to a tee, then one doesn't get too frustrated with missing the putt. You put all your concentration into the technique. There we go. Very easy. That promotes a very good shoulder motion. Well, without a doubt, there are many individual putting styles, but the thing that all great putters have in common is feel. And this is one drill that we've developed to help you to get the feel. Simply, we put some tees out at 10-foot intervals, and simply by putting to each tee, it helps it develop the feel that you need in order to hit the putt a certain distance. Yeah, we're really not worried about direction too much. It's really tr trying to obtain the feel, and you just putt at these at random. And it's uh, by doing it just once, it teaches you a little bit of muscle memory and certainly a lot of feel. Another simple way of doing it is to putt them one-handed. We recommend you, you use your right hand as, as this really is your feel hand. Your left is your, really your guiding hand. And again, you can just let this flow nice and freely and send them down to whichever tee you wish. And then one more little idea, which is, which is very good, is once we've got our direction, after you've taken your aim, take a good look at where the tee is and then shut your eyes and remember that and hit it through to the tee. Using your right hand again to feel the putter going through to the target. Do you feel your putter grip very light on the club, Nick? Yeah, I, I, uh, I use a slightly overlapping grip, but I try to keep as much pressure out of it as possible. Can I just pull it out of your hands? There and you see? go. There we go. You see, most people tend to strangle the putter, thereby losing feel. Gripping yeah. it nice and lightly really gives you the sensation of the putter head, doesn't it? That's right. You want to spend a little time just feeling your putter head. On your practice stroke, you know, all you're doing is feeling the weight of the putt and feeling the putter head. And then we come back into the putt and let it go nice and freely through to the hole. That was a better one. Now there are situations in golf, unfortunately, where we're not left with just a normal straightforward golf shot. And there are times when we're going to have to manufacture a shot. Now with a slight variation of your technique, you'll be able to hit different types of shots. So Nick is going to explain a few of these shots that come up fairly often. The one which you're obviously going to be faced with, well hopefully not too obviously, is a tree in front of your path to the pin. Now the, the route that I've chosen for this shot is under the tree because I've got a nice run up to the green so it's possible to play this. So I'm only about 140 yards from the hole but I've got a five iron here which I can deal off quite simply by A, strengthening my grip very, very slightly which is going to deal off it, moving it fractionally back in the stance. Now I can see the club face is, is going underneath that branch I can even move my weight a little bit further forward and as I take the club back I can set the club a little bit more. Again, everything is going to give me a slightly steeper blow and delofting the club you see through the ball and I want to keep the club head behind the hands at all times. So I follow through here. I don't try and scoop the ball up where you can now see the club head has gone faster than the hands. And most importantly, swing it nice and slow. Don't snatch at it and stay, stay down and believe you can do it. Just make sure you keep your hands ahead of the club head through the shot. OK, 
okay, we have a different problem this time. Now I want to try and hit it over the tree. Now, as you can see from behind, it's a pretty steep tree we're trying to get over, but we can simply move the ball as far forward as possible and move our center of weight just back a fraction, only a little bit there. And by opening the face up just enough to give us a, a nice glancing blow under the ball, but I don't want to help to try and scoop it up. I still want to hit fast through the ball because, I'm, because I've opened the face up so much, I'm gonna lose quite a bit of distance. So I've got an eight iron here. I can aim a little bit left, open that face up, and keep my eyes on the back of the ball and hit through. And there we go, we got it over and safely onto the green. Now the situation we've got here is I'm going to try and draw the ball around this tree. Um, luckily I've got a bit of a right to left wind to help me, so David if you'd give me a little lesson here and run me through exactly what I've got to do. Well certainly. You know in order to shape your golf shots you really have to do it through body alignment. Yeah. So the first thing one has to do uh, is to certainly aim the club face where you want the ball to finish. Right on the pin. I'm going to aim the club right on the pin. Right, now if you could then line your body up to the point where you want the ball to start. So now what we've got virtually is a situation where your body is slightly closed in relation to your club face. Yeah. Now certainly to have a good picture in your mind of the shot you're going to play is very very important. So you're probably going to have the ball a little further back in your stance than normal and certainly by visualizing the shot in your mind you'll probably sense that you're going to release the club a little bit more with your right hand. So let's see if we can picture a good right to left swing okay. shape here. So I've got my club head on target. I'm going to aim my body out and shoulders out towards the right hand bunker and just release the club through. I may have hit that a little too hard. Oh, that's pretty good. Very good shot, Nick. Well, we put you in a situation here, Nick, which requires a left to right shot going around the other side of the tree. So let's set yourself up here as if we're going to play okay. a slight fade. So first of all, let's line the club face up at the point where we wish the ball to finish. Right on the pin. Right, now set your body up a little left of target there where we would like the ball to start. Okay. Place the ball a little further forward in the stance as well. Now what we're also going to do here is to weaken your right hand, get your right hand a little more on top here. This helps to keep the club face open through impact. Yep, and I think I can pull through hard left through impact as well and hold the club face off. Exactly, now very important to visualize this left to right shot. Okay, got the club on target, aiming left, I'm going to pull hard left. There we Great go. shot there, Nick. Thank you. Tempo is one of the keys to consistent play. It helps to eliminate the pressure and the stress from the game. Through the whole of my career, swing tempo has been my strongest feature. To illustrate, I will hit 15 shots with five different clubs. See if you can spot where I change. As you can see, the swing gets a little longer, but the tempo remains the same. That's all right. Well, that brings us to the end of the program. There's a few thank yous. Valderrama have been wonderful. This is the home of the Volvo Masters, which we're going to play at the end of each season. I'd also like to thank David for coming over from the States. And I enjoyed it. Great. And uh, well, we certainly enjoyed it, and we hope that if you can get out and play and reduce your score by a few shots, we've done a good job. Thank you very much. Here we are, 18th hole for Nick Faldo. Really needs to get down in two to be pretty sure of it. Lovely. Oh, lovely. 
was expecting it to turn down the slope and it didn't but that was a pretty good shot in those circumstances how beautifully he got that ball airborne and made it stop quickly that's the hard thing to do in these traps found a not lacking British expatriate support and holiday support down here on the Costa del Sol And that far gives him a 68, a fine closing round for Faldo. He punches the air, he knows his season is over, and he hopes that season has ended with victory. 68 for four under par, 284, and that is remarkable golf round this tough Robert Trent Jones design course. And there, young Natalie and wife Gillian giving family congratulations to uh, Nick who has played so consistently so well.